We turn now to the markets. Let's talk about stocks up strongly today on these rate pause hopes. But my next guest says it won't change anything for the Fed. And as a result, stay defensive. Mike Vogel saying is here now. He is the CIO at CapTrust. Good to see you, Mike. So you think they're, hey, you know, the, the defensive trade was certainly what worked in 2022. Can it sustain uh, throughout this year? Yeah, you know, I mean, I said in my notes, the market's got to take some Adderall. They're, they're so focused on Federal Reserve policy and inflation and so on. Um, you know, at some point, bad news in the ISM uh, index, services index, becomes bad news for corporate profits. Um, we're, we're trying to look for good news. The problem is either the Fed's going to hold rates higher for longer, which, which you know, the market seems to focus on, uh, you know, I don't know, yesterday. Uh, and then today, the, the market, is, market is focused on the fact that inflation may be coming down because the services index is so weak. Uh, at, at a certain point, we've seen uh, already, we've seen 2023 estimated uh, earnings fall from, you know, 250 to 230, 229 this past week. A share, uh, you know, where does that end, and and at what point? If if markets were cheap on lowered earnings, we'd feel a lot better about about stepping up and getting aggressive here. But my goodness, you know, the market's been in a trading range. I think I think it was Santoli was just talking about it a minute ago. Yeah, the market's been basically trending sideways for almost three weeks, and and you know we're at the top of the range today with the with the big rally, but. We just don't think this has changed anything for the Fed. You know, there are some who come on, and, and I take their point and say, you want to lean against the consensus right now. Like I, I sort of was saying before, the defensive trade has worked very well, but, right. you know, all of a sudden, look at the market today. I mean, maybe it's time to be thinking about technology after the, the creaming that it's taken. I don't know. You have, have yeah. I guess, pretty short time horizons for some of these things. No one's saying that, you know, but... But, you know, you could see the market dynamic changing rather quickly and even changing right now if it turns out they're a step ahead on the trajectory that rates are about to take in the next couple of meetings. Right. Yeah, I think that's right. I think, you know, the way we're, we're viewing it is not so much technology because technology has gotten, you know, less homogenous. Right. We, we, you have the sort of sort of um, uh, innovation, you know, unprofitable tech. Uh, you know, led by ARC and so on last year, that, that stuff is pretty much done. Um, the, the thing that's been more durable and, and has had more um, a longer term impact in the market has been the mega cap stocks, the Microsofts, Apples, Amazons and so forth. Those we feel are, are going to continue to bleed. They have certainly not led the market this year. We, we expect that to be to, that, that sort of is the deflation, right? We're going to deflate that bubble as a percentage of the S&P. So we are clearly looking at, at you know, inexpensive stocks. Um, you know the home builders, the the um, the the, the auto makers are trading at five and six times earnings. The airlines, sure. incredibly inexpensive. Um, there's this whole raft of of things that are sort of economically sensitive that are trading at at mid single digit earnings. Those are the kind of things that have really short duration. If you want to think about it in terms of bond bond right. discussion, and and that's where we feel pretty comfortable. Sort of the higher dividend, more value. Um, lower valuation in general, and and you know we're studying it with with you know if you think of Microsoft as the archetype here for that sort of mega cap growth stuff, we just we just think that's kind of the last five years trade. It'll probably be unwinding for a while. Fair, um, fair enough. We've got, we've we've set up our portfolios that way. Let me just finally uh, sort of reconvey what Aswath de Motorin told us yesterday, in which he said he basically owns all of, I'll call it Fang. It's probably more like Mama these days. But <laughs> right, he, exactly. He basically, like that. 